Next on ACC Live Access, four dunks remain. Which will you crown the best in ACC history? MJ's Rock the Cradle against Maryland is in trouble. And speaking of Tar Heels Terps, they meet tonight. Maryland truly needs to go big or go home. Big man Alex Len could be the key and could save their season. Plus, Wake Forest beats Miami. And here they come. We've seen it again and again, court storming. I asked Commissioner John Swafford if it's something that should be stopped. ACC Live Access starts now. History last night on senior night at Cameron with Duke's win over Virginia Tech. Mike Krzyzewski passed Dean Smith for most wins coaching in the ACC, 880. He also passes Smith to move into second place for the most wins at one school. Only Jim Beheim has more. Coach Kane now with 953 wins all time. He's number one. Welcome to ACC Live Access. I'm Jeff Fischel. J.R. Reed is here with me on a Wednesday. High siding with you, man. <laughs> Back again, <laughs> JR. I'm not going to make you compare your mentor, Dean Smith, to Coach K, but there's no doubt with every with every milestone, Coach K is adding to his legacy. Oh, absolutely, Jeff. But it's class personified. He's done it the right way. He's done it without talent. He's done it with talent. You can't say enough about him. Kudos, Coach K and Duke University. And let's not overlook Ryan Kelly last night on senior night. Game two of his return, another fine performance, 18 points, nine rebounds. He just keeps rolling them up. You know for a guy that's been out of, for so long with the nagging foot injury, for him to come back and play the way that he has has been phenomenal, especially, like I said, with just a couple of games under his belt. He was really great, I've got to say, on the pick and roll with Seth Curry. Yeah. He freed up Curry again and again. Well, you know, this is a, a staple of Duke basketball. They love to run the high set, 1-4 one, one high set, and they, they create space. Create spacing with great shooters, and the guys like they have on the perimeter, man, makes it real easy. Not only can Kelly <laughs> score, but do not discount the way he defends, rebounds, and just makes their offense run better. And Absolutely. coming up, I talked to Commissioner John Swafford. He lets me call him Swaff. <laughs> no, not really. So he and I will talk about the ACC tournament court storming and his memories of Michael Jordan at UNC. Swafford was the athletic director in Chapel Hill back in the day for you as well, right? Absolutely. A lot All of right. fine work. So that's coming up. And speaking of Jordan at Chapel Hill, he's one of the four semifinalists in our competition to choose the best dunk in ACC history. We're calling our month of voting Dunkuary. If you want to vote, go to theacc.com slash Dunkuary. Voting for the semifinals closes at 9 a.m. Eastern tomorrow. And I have to tell you, we could be in for a shocker. Show him the bracket, JB. <laughs> Jeff Teague versus Ishmael Muhammad. That's one half. The other half, Michael Jordan versus Mustafa Farrakhan. That left half of the bracket, Teague the nine seed. He's already upset Vince Carter, now going against Georgia Tech's Ishmael Muhammad. Similar dunks, but only one can advance to the championship. Teague going strong in 2009 against Maryland. JR. Oh, yes, this is a nice one over the big fella against Maryland. I like that. Pumps the chest and lets everyone know about it right there. Ishmael Muhammad go back to 2005. Same spot on the court. He was known as a vicious dunk. Oh, it's not good. When he started that move with a spin move on the sideline and then lines up the young fella, I don't know what he did to make him dunk on him like that. That's <laughs> just not right. Her. Thought he was going to take the charge, and then he just ducks out of the way. I said Ishmael with accent. <laughs> That's what so, he said. If, <laughs> so if you had to pick one, who would you pick going to the final? I think as, as nice as a dunk as Jeff Teagues was, Ishmael was just that much nastier. The way that he went up and finished on top of someone's neck <laughs> automatically, I think, should advance you. <laughs> now the other semifinal, here is the dunk that's shocking everyone. Mustafa Farrakhan, our 15 seed. Oh, so far, he's beaten uh, the two seed. Dante uh, Jones doing push-ups. Up. That's a oh. strong dunk right there. Oh, that Mustafa is Mustafa Farrakhan's phenomenal. also beaten the 10 seed, Len Bias, that classic jam, the reverse when they upset North Carolina in Chapel Hill, but now he's trying to slay another giant, Michael oh. Jordan. Oh, this is the dunk. Come on, before this, before this, it had never been done before. And it took Black Cat, as we called him, to do it, to bring it into life like he did in the ACC. So clearly we know which dunk from that semifinal you want to advance. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I've got to go with Jordan. With the, the cradle dunk, man, that's, that's iconic. Again, I asked Commissioner John Swafford about his memories of being on Chapel Hill, the campus, during the Michael Jordan years. That's coming up later here on ACC Live. Let's see the updated voting totals. Wow. The first half, the left half of the bracket, Teague versus Muhammad, 
ish has built up a has built up a big league there. But look at Jordan versus Farrakhan. Wow. No joke, 50-50. Yeah, that's a tight one, but I'm going with Ishmael with the accent against Michael Jordan. I think Jordan squeezes out. You have until 9 a.m. tomorrow morning to vote on the semifinals. Do not wait. Vote early, vote often. Clearly, some Mustafa Farrakhan fans are voting early and often. <laughs> so you have to keep up if you want to see that Jordan dunk advance. Or if you want to see the 15 seed continue to pull off its Cinderella story, keep voting. The ACC dot com slash dunkuary tonight three acc games all involving teams projected to be in the tourney let's go right through the week that night menu miami can't afford a loss to georgia tech oh. if it wants a one seed oh not at all georgia tech has lost three of the last four but i'm looking for the freshman of the week uh, carter jr robert carter jr to have a good matchup against rodney johnson that's struggling after over last game NC State looks for revenge against Wake Forest. Yeah, Wake Forest is always going to play them tough. But for NC State, it's about them. They've got to look inward. They've got to come out with a good execution and have the right mind frame. Chemistry has been a little problem for NC State lately. And P.J. Hairston and the Blue Hot, yes, Blue Hot Tar Heels against Maryland. North Carolina has won five in a row. The Terps still have an outside shot at grabbing a bid. Des Wells did everything he could in the win over Wake Forest on Saturday. 11 of 12 from the field. So that's tonight's big game. The Tar Heels and the Terps. And that is our spotlight game. Maryland and Carolina. Mark Turge and Roy Williams, they've spent a large part of the season trying to solve a puzzle. They have the pieces, but can they make them fit together? JR, how have they done? I think they've done very well. But beginning of the season, ah, the jury was still out on Tar Heels a little bit. But recently, they switched to small ball. P.J. Harrison moved into the star lineup, and it's been good news for the Tar Heels. Here, you'll see that this wasn't a good matchup. They had the wrong player on Bullock, and Carolina recognized and got the spot up three. Here, they're small, but they're tenacious inside. P.J. Harrison making himself feel inside as, as well as outside, and that energy. This is what he's brought to Carolina in space in the court. And for Maryland, what they need to do is a lot more of this. Try to get the ball inside to, Len to Lynn. Lynn's got to use his length against a smaller Carolina team where they could have problems. But here, even against Hubert, the bigger player, another seven-footer, he's able to score inside. And I think this is what Maryland has to do to have a chance to win against the That's Hill. the tough matchup, right, for Carolina. They're going, in large parts of the game, they're going to have James Michael McAdoo yes. trying to guard Alex Lynn. That's one negative of going to small ball, Jeff. But if Carolina can come out with effort and energy like they have in the last couple of games, they can overcome some of their deficiencies inside. Another issue for Turgeon has been the backcourt. Pishon Howard is getting more time at the point. He seems to have a steadying influence on a team that was making way too many turnovers. It looks like with Howard at the point also, Des Wells gets a chance to have be attack the rim more. Yes, you know, early in the season, Coach Turgeon went with the younger lineup. A lot of the freshmen, some of the freshman guys get an opportunity at the point guard. But now, late in the season, his senior, Pishon Howard, gets an opportunity to try to steady the ship and make this run for the big dance. Maryland has had one of the great upset wins this season. The Terps defeated Duke last month, and Maryland fans stormed the court. That's happened several times this year. We've seen ACC fans loving storming the court after a big win, but the court storming has also raised safety concerns, and that topic is getting nationwide attention. Joining me now, the commissioner of the Atlantic Coast Conference, John Swafford. John, let's start with the men's exciting season. Two teams are in the top six in the country. There have been some great upsets as well. It looks like Greensboro for the ACC basketball tournament could be really exciting this year. Jeff, it really could, uh, and you mentioned the, the two teams in the top six with, with Duke and Miami, and uh, uh, Duke consistently there. What a great story Miami has been. Uh, and we're looking at hopefully uh, as many as six teams in the NCAAs, and I think when you look at the regular season and the upsets that have occurred uh, throughout the year, I think this tournament uh, has the potential to be one of the most competitive ones we've seen in years. Now, when we've seen some of these upsets, we've seen fans storm the court. There's been a lot of talk about it. What's your thoughts on it? How much has the conference considered the safety implications and just kids wanting to have fun? Well, what you want to do, I think, is uh, strike the right balance there and find the right sweet spot. The first concern, obviously, is safety. Uh, we really want to make certain that our coaches and our players, the opposing players, the officials, have the opportunity to get off the floor in a, in a safe manner and I think our schools have generally done an excellent job of that and uh, and you want people to have fun and, and you know to have those kinds of situations you have to have some highly ranked teams and you have to have some upsets 
and we've had both uh, during the course of this season. Uh, and, and ACC fans are tremendously passionate uh, about their basketball. So uh, our ADs have talked about uh, the best ways to do that, best practices, uh, and I think they've come to a good spot with it. Now, of course, the excitement will be this weekend for the women's tournament in Greensboro, so I'll be seeing you very soon there. We have four teams in the top 25, so it is, again, looking like a great women's tournament as well. Well, it, it is. I, we've had a great year there. Duke has had a tremendous uh, regular season, uh, and I think the women's tournament, uh, which is so successful here in Greensboro year after year, will have the same kind of competition that our men's tournament has the potential to have. Now, we were going back through the ages here in the ACC because we've been doing a dunk contest of the great dunks in ACC history. Michael Jordan is one of the four finalists in this one, and you were actually the athletic director at North Carolina when Jordan was there. What memories do you have of the North Carolina teams with Michael Jordan? Well, I, I think the first memory that I have, of course, is, is Michael hitting the uh, winning shot in the national championship game against Georgetown. Uh, back in 1982 uh, in the Superdome uh, in New Orleans. Uh, that was really special because it was Dean Smith's first national championship, and he had gotten close a number of times, and, and uh, it was really special to, to see a freshman named Michael Jordan uh, make that shot that was a difference maker in that national championship game. And to watch a young man being recruited who – was a, a great high school player, but kind of late in blossoming and uh, was not the North Carolina High School Player of the Year. Uh, another Carolina player named Buzz Peterson was in that particular year. They became roommates and, and fast friends. And then to see uh, Michael's career, his playing career, and now the first uh, former NBA player to become uh, uh, the majority owner in an NBA franchise. So it's just been neat to, to watch Michael as a person and, of course, to watch him become the greatest basketball player to ever play the game. John Swaffer, the commissioner of the ACC, thanks for taking a few minutes, and I will see you in Greensboro for the women's basketball tournament this weekend. Looking forward to it, Jeff. JR, I love that Commissioner Swafford has such vivid memories of the Jordan days in Chapel Hill. Oh, man, what a great insight that, you know, uh, Mr. Swafford has been able to give us. He can go back to the very beginning, from the humble beginnings, beginnings of Michael Jordan, when he wasn't Air Jordan, and how hard he worked. So I know great, great recollections there. I actually also talked to Commissioner Swafford. Uh, you'll be able to see on the ACC Digital Network. We talk about the football schedule, so you'll be able to look for that on the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Jordan, one of the four semifinalists for Dunkuary, does he have the greatest dunk in ACC history? To vote, go to the acc.com slash Dunkuary. Commissioner Swafford gave us his take on court storming, but what impact does it have on the team that wins? JR puts on his stethoscope and finds a dangerous virus that spreads to the teams that pull off the huge upset. That's next on ACC Live. Out with the old and in with the delicious. Commit to bold taste with the new flavor resolutions menu at Ruby Tuesday. Ten entrees starting at $9.99. Try our savory barbecue brushed ribs and bacon wrapped shrimp. Or take it up a notch by adding coconut crusted shrimp to our mango salsa topped Caribbean chicken. Plus, enjoy our endless garden bar, free with any chef inspired entree. Ruby Tuesday. It's all good here. Start the new year with savings. Visit rubytuesday.com today for a $5 coupon. What's better, bigger or smaller? Bigger! So which would you rather have, a big tree house or a small tree house? If it's big enough, you can have a disco. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why do you not want a smaller tree house? Because it wouldn't be able to fit a flat screen TV in, and the TV would be about this big, and you would have to hold the wire, and the position would hold the wire, you wouldn't be able to see the TV. That's a pain in the buns. Yep, yeah, yeah. It's not complicated. Bigger is better. And AT&T has the nation's largest 4G network. The ACC Digital Network, the ultimate video destination for ACC fans. Exclusive highlights, live streaming games and original live programming, unique access to the student athletes of our time and the legendary voices of all time. Defining moments, personal stories, incredible analysis from authentic ACC sources, cutting edge content from the leaders in the digital space. The ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Good afternoon. 
Chase Sapphire, this is Stacey from Springfield. Oh, oh. Hello? Yes, I didn't realize you'd be talking to an actual person. You don't need to press zero. I'm here. Reach a person, not a prompt, whenever you call Chase Sapphire. This dunk of the day brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Booker locks up and drops the hammer. That is the emotion of senior night. They took off from a long way away. Start the new year with savings. Visit RubyTuesday.com to get $5 off two entrees. That is Clemson's Devin Booker last night. Clemson came up short to Boston College. Welcome back to ACC Live. I'm Jeff Fischel. He's North Carolina and NBA great J.R. Reed. If you want dunks, we have dunks. Vote for the best dunk in ACC history. We are down to four. Jeff Teague, Ishmael Muhammad, Mustafa Farrakhan, Michael Jordan. To vote, our bracket is at the ACC.com slash dunkuary. Semi-final voting closes at 9 a.m. tomorrow, and we announce a champ next Monday. J.R., have you been clicking? Uh, once in a while, I got a few up there. <laughs> Jordan few. needs all the votes he can. You need your North Carolina to dunk to advance. Now it's time for other stories from around the conference. This is the ACC Now. Coach K has been named the 2013 recipient of the Dick Enberg Award for his commitment to academics and athletics. The award is given by the College Sports Information Directors of America. It's named after Enberg, who was the first recipient in 1997. College baseball writers... They have named North Carolina State star southpaw Carlos Rodon the national co-pitcher of the week Saturday against Florida Atlantic. Rodon struck out a career-high 16 batters in seven innings. Think about that. He got 21 outs, 16 of them by strikeout. Congrats to Rodon. JR and I have been breaking down the conference. The ACC women are ready for their big moment. The conference tournament starts tomorrow. Mike Hogwood and Debbie Antonelli have a preview. It was a great end to the regular season in ACC women's basketball. Duke had only one league loss, but that loss, Debbie, came in the final week of the year. No worries for the Blue Devils, Mike. They've been the number one team all season long. They've been the top team. They get the number one seed in the tournament, and they're anchored on the inside by one of the top low post players in women's college basketball. Elizabeth Williams, 6'3", just a sophomore is their go-to player on the interior, but also can defend the rim, a terrific shot blocker who anchors the backside of that Duke defense. Maryland's gonna be another one of the favorites in Greensboro, but they too lost a game in the final week. Yeah, but they got the best player. Her name is Alyssa Thomas. She's been the most consistent, solid, most powerful player in women's college basketball all season. She can score, she can rebound, she can distribute, and she has a great counter on the interior. Tiana Hawkins, Hawkins and Thomas have been one and two all season at the top of the scoring and the rebounding charts. They have been the best combination all season. It's going to be a great tournament in Greensboro, and as we always say, expect the unexpected. Thank you both. One woman to keep an eye on for sure in Greensboro the next four days. Carolina's Zelina McDaniel. She's been voted the ACC Rookie of the Year. She also leads this year's All-ACC Freshman Team. To see every player who made it, go to the ACC.com. And that is the ACC Now. And JR, you've played against your dad, the X-Man. Yeah, I've played against the tough man. <laughs> uh, Xavier McDaniel's a great competitor. Grew up idolizing him, his physical play with a, a big man with a jump shot. So kudos to Xena for a great, great uh, accolade. Great start for the freshman year for her. We've been talking about court storming. It's happened several times this season, but we've noticed for several teams the jubilation, the exuberance, the sheer joy of it all. Well, it turns ugly pretty fast. Teams go from celebrating a huge win to falling into a funk. It's time to bring in our doctor. Dr. JRE. Doctor, you've seen this before. It's a virus. It spreads to schools that storm the court. Uh, I've been analyzing this virus. I've been having it under my Petri dish for a while now. And what I've seen to cure this disease, you can't rush the court. It seems that every team, Jeff, that rushes the court has gotten stung <laughs> after that. They got stung after that directly. Right. Let's make like the CDC and trace this disease, court storm-itis, back to its origins. The first team to show symptoms was North Carolina State. The Wolfpack beat number one Duke. Fans went wild. Remember, C.J. Leslie came to the rescue of Will yeah. Privet, who got knocked out of his wheelchair. After that, <laughs> NC State lost five of its next seven games. Wow. The first of those losses just days later was to Maryland, and Terps fans stormed the court. They then lost three of four. Then Terps stormed the court again. A month to the day later, the Terps beat the Blue Devils. Perhaps the last time they'll play at the Comcast Center. Then the Terps went out and lost two of three. 
to Boston College and Georgia Tech. Now, like Maryland, Wake Forest fans have stormed the court twice this year. Both times, the Deeks caught the virus. January 22nd, they beat NC State. Then they lost four in a row. 11 days ago, they gave Miami its first conference loss. The Deacons have lost two in a row since. Then last week, Virginia, the Cavs beat Duke. It was a great scene at JPJ. It looked like Tony Bennett's team would finally get the national attention it deserved. So what happens? The Cavaliers went out and lost Sunday wow. to Boston College. So, JR, are you telling me that the only solution is don't do it? I think so. You know, I'm old school. I'm from the, I'm from the belief, like Coach Smith used to say, if you get to the end zone, score a basket or dunk, act like you've been there before. So I think the only remedy to this, Jeff, is don't do it. Don't storm. It hasn't, it hasn't boded well for the team storming the court. Now, you played at one of the great college basketball traditions. You were a Tar Heel. Tar Heel fans, they're not going to storm the court, right? No, no. no. I, I don't think that you'll, you'll ever see that happen, just like Coach K did earlier, stopping uh, Duke students from storming. I think schools with traditions look down on that type of thing. All right. So we've seen it several times, and clearly the message is you're going to start losing if you storm the court. <laughs> it's not a good look. Think twice. <laughs> don't forget, semifinal voting for the best dunk in ACC history. It ends tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Teague versus Ish. MJ versus Farrakhan. Vote at the acc.com slash junkuary. I am headed to Greensboro for the ACC Women's Tournament. JR will be with me next week yes. in Greensboro for the Men's Tournament. Keep watching the ACC Digital Network for the latest on Dunkuary, the great highlights from tonight's men's games. Thank you for watching ACC Live on the ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday.